Welcome to Husker Storm Blog. This is a week six prediction video. And uh, we'll go over week five and then get into the predictions. Um, so week five started off quick with some upsets. You had uh, Washington defeating Stanford. Um, Stanford's definitely not a top ten team and definitely not even, I don't even think they're a top fifteen team. And I don't know how Washington got in the polls. Big deal, you beat a top 10 team. They got walloped by LSU. 41-3, to that's not deserving of a top 25 ranking. Um, uh, most of the top five teams slept walk through their games. Oregon struggled in the first half with Washington State. LSU looked vulnerable against Towson. Alabama, they weren't very sharp. Um, Florida State, uh... Who else is there? Georgia, a lot, a lot of points to Tennessee. Tennessee was able to get their running game that has been irrelevant for the first five weeks of the season going. Or first four weeks of the season. And, I mean, they rushed for almost, I think it was almost 200 yards. It might have been 200 yards. Uh, Geno Smith, eight touchdowns, 600-plus yards. Um, Texas defeated uh, Oklahoma State. Uh, Braxton Miller continues to carry Ohio State. Uh, Nebraska overcame a 17-point deficit that was self-created um, to, you know, uh, come back and beat Wisconsin. And South Carolina struggled against Kentucky, but was able to take care of business. Was able to take care of business in the end. Arkansas continues to fall, and A and M is a team that is top 25 at least on my ballot. Um, and they should be in the top 25. I believe it's the AP poll that they're not, and they have Washington in there instead. The media poll's stupid. Um, A&M's only lost to a top 10 team in Florida, and it was by four points. They just, I mean, yeah, Arkansas sucks, but they beat the tar out of them. Their quarterback's a stud. Uh, Oregon State continues to rise. They got another road win over the Wildcats. So let's go ahead and start my predictions for week six. Nebraska at Ohio State, shootout in the big, unlike last week's 17-16 to game with Ohio State and Michigan State. Uh, you got the two top two quarterbacks in the Big Ten, um, battling out what looks to be a, a close game, a good game between the, the two best teams in the Big Ten, arguably. Um, both teams have had their fair share of shakiness defensively, and I expect a lot of offense in this one. And uh, whatever quarterback makes the critical mistake at the critical point in the game is going to lose this one. I think uh, Braxton Miller steps up, takes care of this one for the Buckeyes. Yes, I'm a Nebraska fan, but I have the Buckeyes winning this one 37-34. I think it could go either way. And, you know, honestly, I could see either team winning by 10 points. Uh, but I think it's going to be close for the majority of the game. Uh, Miami at Notre Dame. This one is at Soldier Field. Uh... The convicts and the Catholics will square off. Um, the U.S. has started to play better football since their terrible game against Kansas State. Um, but they played nobody. Uh, Georgia Tech, big deal. Boston College, some FCS school, big deal. You're what, 4-1, and one, and you played nobody. Now you get your chance at Notre Dame. I think the Irish win this one in a blowout. They put Kansas State back where they belong. I mean, not Kansas State, Miami, Black, where they belong, 37-10. to 10. Notre Dame's defense does their job, and uh, they continue to rise, too. Uh, USC at Utah, this one could be closer than people think. I know there are people thinking upset here, but there's a lot of people that think USC is going to go on the road and smash Utah. Uh, I still think Bar Matt Barkley takes care of business. I can't go with against him right now. I think he's going to ride this team to the end. And, you know, they're going to find their way to get into a BCS Bowl, if not win the Pac-12. 34-17, USC gets this one. LSU at Florida will an unbeaten fall here. Oops. Well, obviously, yes, one team will fall. Um, they're both unbeaten. Um, but will, you know, the fourth best team in the country, um, according to the rankings. Sorry about that. Um, you know, will they fall? they got to go to the Swamp. Uh, two stellar defenses here, both offenses that like to run the ball, have struggled in the passing game. Um, whoever finds success in the passing game is going to you know, win this game, obviously. 
And, you know, I'm going to take the home team, Will Muschamp. He's got this team playing good football. They're running the ball. They're playing defense, 16-14. I don't see it going higher than the teens in this one. It's going to be a good game, and I think LSU loses their first game. But they're not out. They're not out. One loss is it too much. They play Alabama at home. Uh, Georgia Tech at Clemson. The Yellow Jackets just got their butts whooped by Middle Tennessee. Middle Tennessee, yeah. MTSU, Middle Tennessee State University. They had a freaking hor gray horse on their blue helmet. I don't even know who the heck they are. I've seen them play before, but they were playing like Grambling State or something. They, sh I mean, this is an FBS school in Middle Tennessee, but come on. They got smashed. I mean, Middle Tennessee, I think, put up 58 points. Um, I think the Yellow Jackets uh, get that triple option game going. Clemson's struggling against it last year, so they're going to, you know, keep Clemson's offense off the field, but not enough time because that defense is looking for answers, and they're not going to find any this week with Sammy Watkins and DeAndre Hopkins and Ellington out there. 45-30, uh, that's what I think is going to be It could be worse, but Clemson's defense is something you cannot rely on. Georgia at South Carolina, could this decide the East? I think Florida's still in there. There's no question about it. Um, they were my sleeper pick in the East, and a – Nobody's sleeping on them anymore. Uh, so, you know, South Carolina's taking care of business against Georgia. They've owned the SEC East of late. And South Carolina, for me watching them so far this year, besides that Vanderbilt game and last week against Kentucky, they've looked like a better team than Georgia. Georgia's not playing defense like they have been in the past, past year. Um, but South Carolina is playing good defense. I think Connor Shaw does enough in this one. And this is a must win for the game, Gamecocks considering they have to play LSU and Alabama both on the road. So, you know, they got to win this game. They can't afford to lose this one. They've got Georgia at home. And I think they prevail on this one. It's This game's always high scoring. And I think it's going to be, again, 41-38 Gamecocks. West Virginia at Texas. Both teams coming off good wins against quality opponents and shootouts um, and this is going to be another hard-fought shootout in the Big 12 like always uh, a game that is going to potentially decide the Big 12 I don't see any national title implications here and either teams are going to go undefeated I'm sorry West Virginia um, Geno Smith is going to continue to uh, show why he's the Heisman front runner in this one 42-41 close one in Austin Texas there the West Virginia Mountaineers win 42-41. Um, Oklahoma at Texas Tech. Texas Tech has the best defense in the country. Big deal. What, five games in the year? I think they've only played four games or something. Um, means nothing. But they are playing better defense. There's no question about it this year. They had, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to, to go up from where they, were, where they were last year. They had the worst defense in the history of their program. And they're playing a lot better. Um, and Oklahoma has not played well on the road of late, and Lanchie Jones is not the same quarterback without Ryan Broyles. He should have entered the draft last year. His draft stock is dropping, and I think the Red Raiders get the upset. 24-20, back-to-back years against Oklahoma. Northwestern at Penn State. One of the two final undefeated teams in the Big Ten scores, against, scores off against arguably the hottest team in Penn State in the Big Ten. Uh, Nittany Lions are finally playing better football. They just crushed Illinois on the road. And they're going to play good enough defense to keep themselves in this one. But I think Northwestern's offense is going to play well enough to win this one. 24-21. Don't be surprised. This is a toss-up. It could go either way. Uh, Michigan at Purdue. The mighty Boilermakers defense will suffocate Denard Robinson. Yeah, I said it. Again, another defense stopping Denard Robinson this year. A terrible senior year for him. Uh, Michigan's too one-dimensional to find success against a what I think is an underrated defense that plays really good sound football. They got two of the best cornerbacks in the Big Ten. They got a great defensive line, and I think they're going to force them into mistakes. And they've got an explosive enough offense. Now they got to get the run game going. It's been a lot better this year than it was last year, but still not good enough to be an elite, a great offense in the Big Ten, um, much like. Nebraska and Ohio State are, but they have been, you know, they're doing their job offensively. They're scoring a lot of points, and uh, Purdue's at home, and I got to give it to them in this one. They're the favorite to win the leaders' division, 
and I think they do. And uh, this one's going to elevate them to the clear favorite. And uh, they shut down Denard Robinson and defeat the Wolverines and move into the top 25. 27-21. Oops, sorry about that. Boilermakers. Washington at Oregon. Back-to-back -back upsets for the Huskies. Not a chance. You're not going to go to Eugene with... Uh, they are playing better defense. I'll give you props there. They're playing much better rush defense than they have in previous years. But there's no way... That they're going to go into Eugene and upset the Ducks. I think they're going to keep this close until halftime. Keith Price is too good of a player to let this game, you know, get out of hand. But he doesn't have enough weapons around him. Um, they're starting to get healthier. But injuries have really decimated that offense. And uh, I thought it decimated that defense. But obviously not. They played well enough against, you know, a pretty weak offense in Stanford, but still a physical football team that ran the ball for 450 yards last year on them, and they held them to like 60. So they're playing better defense, and they're going to be able to hold this game close for about a half, but the Ducks run away from teams in the second half. That's what they do. They wear you down, and uh, they play solid defense, and, you know, they're going to continue that and get another win in the Pac-12 over the Huskies in this one. Let me see what my prediction was. 45-20. I've got the Ducks winning. It's going to stay close, but the Ducks are just too good on offense for the Huskies to keep up. Thanks for watching. Check back later. Check out my, my Ohio State-Nebraska prediction video. I should have a link up here. Um, but thanks for watching. Go Big Red.